So a while ago I made a tutorial on making Flappy Bird in Pygame. And the game works fairly well. But there are a couple of mistakes that I made that I would really like to rectify in this tutorial. And there are three major things I really want to work on. Number one is it turns out I didn't know how the scoring system for Flappy Bird works. Number two is that we don't destroy the pipes once they're leaving the screen. Which doesn't really make a difference for the game, but it has the potential to cause some problems down the line. And number three is since I made the video, a new version of Pygame came out that changes the sound setup a tiny bit. So we have to address that bit as well. But let's start with the important one, the scoring system. And let's jump right into the code and address this. So here we are back in the code for our game. And well, nothing really changed. We still have all the functions that create the logic of our game. Then we have quite a few different variables that import mostly the graphics and a couple of events. Um, also a couple of sounds. Then we have the event loop. Um, still here. And all the way down here, the scoring system happens down here. And score display is perfectly fine. This one I'm not going to touch. But all the other bits turned out to be quite hacky. And I really should have put more effort into this. So sorry about that. But basically what happens here is that we are adding a very small number to the score and turn this number into an integer. So it shows up as a whole number. And at the same time, we also keep on counting down from the number 100. And whenever this number hits zero, we play a sound. So effectively, our score is increasing with time, which isn't how the scoring system in Flappy Bird turns out to work. We should only get a score and play the sound if our Flappy Bird crosses a pipe. So let's get rid of all of this, because it just it's kind of hideous, to be honest. And instead, I want to put all of this into a function. And I call that function pipe score check. And all this function needs to do is to check our bird in relation to the pipes. And every time the bird passes for a pipe, we get plus one for the score and we play the sound. So let's create that. So I go back to the top where all my functions are and I am adding a new function that I called pipe score check. Does not need any arguments. And to make this function work, we need two pieces of information. Number one is the X position of our bird. And this one is actually super simple because our bird is not moving in the X position. So this one is always going to be 100 which makes things quite a bit easier to be honest. And number two is we have to know the X position of each of the pipes in the pipe list. And since our pipes are stored in a global variable for the pipe list, we can access this super easily. So really all we have to do, if I go down a bit, we have our pipe list. And in there, we are going to store all the pipes that we are spawning on the screen. And well, we just have to look through this list. So I first want to check if there's anything in the pipe list in the first place. So if pipe list has anything, then I want to do something. And what I want to do is for pipe in pipe list. So if anything is inside of the pipe list, I want to look at every single pipe inside of that pipe list. And in here, I want to check if any of the pipes is in the same position as the bird in the horizontal axis. And in the simplest terms, this would be if pipe dot center x, so the center of the pipe, is equal to 100, which would be the position of our bird. However, this would be too precise. So for example, the center of a pipe might be at position 99 or 98 or maybe 101. Instead, I'm going to give it some wiggle room. So as long as the center is below 105 and greater than 95. So this is going to give us some more pixels of wiggle room, which is perfectly adequate. And now with that, we know if our pipe is in the same position as our bird. So now we can just increase the score by plus equal one. And we can also take our score sound and play it. Now there's one more change I do have to make, that this score is a variable outside of the function. So it has to be a global variable which I use with the global keyword. So global score at the top of the function. And let's give it a bit more space. All right, and let's try this now and let's see what happens. So there you can see that it is kind of working with the one exception that we increase the score by two instead of one. And there's a simple reason for that, that we are checking if the center of the pipe is in the position of the bird. 
but this can happen for multiple times per game loop. So we are triggering the score plus one multiple times. In my case this is two, but if your game is running faster, this might even be plus four or plus six. So we would have to add a bit more code to trigger this line of code only once. And fortunately that's quite easy to do. And here's the logic for it. The bird score is only going to be able to update when the bird is in the middle of the pipe. However, after every time we get a score, we disable the possibility of adding another score, so that our score plus one can only be triggered once. And then when the pipe has moved on a little bit further, we are going to reactivate the ability to get a score. And that way the score is only going to increase once. And all of this should be quite easy to implement, so let's jump right back into our code and do it. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new variable that I called can score. And by default, this one is going to be true. And then this line here can only trigger if can score is true. And then once we have triggered it, can score is going to be set to false. So what would be happening right now in our code is we can get up to the score of one, but not any further because this can score is going to be false. Although one more change, we have to set can score to a global variable because we're setting a variable outside of the function. And let's actually try this. So theoretically, I should be able to get one point, but not more. So all we need now is to have some kind of ability to set our can score back to true. And this one is also quite simple to achieve. I am just going to add a second if statement. And what I want to check is if pipe dot center x. So again, the center of our pipe is smaller than zero. So if the pipe is moving a little bit further to the left. And if that is the case, I want to set can score back to true. And this is almost all we needed. So let's try it again. And well, this is working. Cool. Although there's one minor problem. That there's a small chance that if we are crashing and can score still set to false, we are not able to get another score when we restart the round. So what I want to do is when we check for collisions, so every time our bird crashes, I want to set can score back to true in either case, no matter what happens. So can score is equal to true. So all this is doing is that when our game is restarting, can score set to true, so that we can make sure the first pipe we are crossing is going to give us a score. And this is all that's happening here. And then again, global can score, because we're influencing a variable outside of the function. And this should be covering the entire first part. Now our score is only going to increase if we actually cross a pipe which is going to make our game a bit nice, I think. And also it is going to make our code look quite a bit nicer. Because now down here, I can just add a score comment and then we have the code for our bird, for our pipes and for our score, which is looking quite a bit cleaner. So I'm quite happy with the changes now. And cool. So with that covered, we can come to the second part that I want to despawn some pipes once they leave the screen. And the reason for that is quite simple, so let me explain it. Right now, we are only destroying all the pipes once the player has failed at the game. Which is workable, but not ideal. Because if a player is doing really well and gets to a score 1000 for example, then we would have a ton of pipes that would not be visible, but that do clock up processing space. So all I want to do is if a pipe is leaving our screen, then I want to destroy it. And that is super easy to do, let's go right into the code and let's address this. So here we are back in our code. And what I want to work in is the move pipes function. And all we're doing in here is we take every single pipe and moving it to the left, and then we are returning the pipes. And we only have to add one more line of code to fix this. So what I want to do is to create a new variable that's called visible pipes. And this is going to be a list comprehension. And in here, for now, I want to get pipe or pipe in pipes. So this right now would copy the entire pipes list, but I don't want to get every single item. Instead, I only want to get a pipe if pipe dot 
right is greater than minus 50, which is quite a bit outside of the screen. And I've just chosen this number to give some wiggle room just to be sure. So all that's happening here is that we are copying the pipes list, but we are only copying the elements that are on the screen. Or more specifically, we are only copying pipes where the right point is greater than minus 50, which is very much making sure that they are going to be on the screen. And then we don't return the pipes anymore. Instead, we are going to return the visible pipes. And that would be it. So it's very hard to show this in the game, but well, trust me, it's working. And okay, with that, there's one more change I want to make. And it concerns the pygame.mixer.preinit line. And for pygame 1.9.6, we did have to specify it. But a new version of pygame came out, quite a major one, pygame 2. And this one is not needing this line anymore because it takes care of the sound by itself. So all I have to do is to comment this line out and we are good to go. That's really all it is. And that is pretty much it. So I hope that was helpful and I will see you around.